Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and I want to talk to those of you with flat feet. So what the heck is going on with flat feet? What causes the foot to become flat, AKA collapsed arch, right? So you either have been told you have flat feet or a collapsed arch <clears throat> or a fallen arch all the same thing. So what is going on and then what can you do about it? And I also, in this video, I wanna talk about the common things that I see uh, doctors or podiatrists telling people to do and the most common is getting shoe inserts. But I'm not a fan of shoe inserts or orthotics, uh, really for any reason, um, because in my experience that actually is like putting a band-aid on the situation and not addressing the root cause. And while it might take the pain or issue away that we're getting the shoe insert for, often there'll be a ripple effect upstream causing pain in other places. And you may not even know that they're connected. Uh, the reason is when you put an insert in your shoe, even just a tiny adjustment of uh, foot anatomy or structure change, right? Where your foot hits the ground, it's going to change your gait. And when you change your gait, uh, especially if you haven't addressed some kind of root cause in, you know, that was initially causing the problem, now we're in major compensation uh, patterns. So you end up compensating with other muscles even more. If your gait is changing from your natural gait, plus you haven't addressed the root issue, it's a compounding compensation problem. And when you actually go to address the root cause, it can take longer because you're not only having to address the root cause, but all the compensation patterns that got created by trying to fix the problem with something like a shoe insert. So that's my little spiel on uh, something like orthotics. So I wanted to talk about that first and foremost. Um, I'm not necessarily familiar with all of the prescribed you know, treatments or uh, diagnoses in the medical model for flat feet. <clears throat> but what I know about it from working in my private practice with so many people is it's usually due to a compensation pattern for something else anyway um, that causes the flat foot. But what I wanna show you right now is I'm gonna use a strap uh, on my foot to show you what your foot kind of looks like in a fascial pattern causing flat foot. So when the foot becomes flat, it's usually due to fascial winding up. So something's getting tightened and tightened and tightened. Uh, and then your foot eventually kind of collapses on the inside. And the predominant pattern with flat feet, the thing that's getting wound up, is the outer fascia on your lower leg. So I'm just gonna show you this with using a strap. So if you imagine the strap kind of represents fascial lines running medially and laterally. So this would be that inside medial line, the outside would be that lateral or outside line or the strap. Um, and a lot of the time what happens is our, the perineal fascia out here on the outer part of the calf uh, starts to really tighten and shorten and pull the foot inward. So if I pulled that way, it would actually create an opposite pattern, right? Um, and I have sometimes seen that uh, in addition to the outer part of the calf, that perineal fascia, sometimes in relationship to flat feet, the really high, high inner calf fascia can get really tight. And that can also kind of pull on that, um, just kind of like the, the ankle joint and the bottom of the foot in such a way that it, it helps it fall even flatter. Like it causes that pattern to ingrain even deeper. But the primary pattern is that outside uh, perineal, a little bit of tibialis anterior, and then outer gastrocnemia fascia getting really tight. And sometimes it can even involve the outside ankle fascia. So if you've ever sprained your ankle really bad or broke your foot or landed, like maybe like jumped out of a tree or jumped from a height 
and fell or landed really like hard on your ankles, or if you did that a lot uh, as a kid, maybe you did gymnastics like me, um, and maybe it, it, instead of making you hypermobile down there in your joint, it kind of jammed that um, outside of your ankle. That would be another potential place you could look to see if it's causing your flat foot. But I have uh, magically fixed all kinds of flat feet, uh, often really quickly, even in one session, by going to the perineal and tibialis anterior and outer gastrocnemia fascia. So that's gonna be your protocol here for eliminating, starting to eliminate that pattern. I shouldn't say eliminating it, you know, like you're not probably gonna eliminate your flat feet in one session of self fascia release. So when I'm working on clients, I'm doing my method of kinetics where I'm actually stepping on people. So I'm using a lot of weight, uh, more than you can get on your own using self-help techniques. So doing it on your own is gonna take a little bit of time, but you can definitely undo this pattern. Uh, but I would do you a huge disservice today if I didn't talk about what's likely the root cause, because just that outside fascia getting tight, it isn't necessarily the root cause. Uh, what I would wanna ask is why is that outside fascia getting tight? And a lot of the time what I find with my clients is that it's actually a cause uh, or a compensation pattern from pelvic instability and potentially a glute muscle, particularly gluteus medius, not firing, being inhibited uh, on that same side leg. So what happens when your gluteus medius muscle can't stabilize your hip through walking lunging, squatting, hiking, running, etc. basically a lot of human movements, then that lateral fascial line will kick in to stabilize you. And now you're asking, you know, smaller muscles that aren't meant to act as hip stabilizers, they're getting recruited to stabilize your hip for you and they're tightening up and they're tightening up and then eventually your body can't take it anymore and the foot starts collapsing and maybe you even end up in pain, something like plantar fasciitis or pain um, in your heel or something like that from the flat foot. But a lot of the time you're gonna have flat feet without any pain per se in your foot. Uh, so solving the pelvic instability issue is a little more complex. Uh, I do have a course coming out um, for pelvic, solving pelvic instability and glute inhibition. Uh, so depending on when we put this video out, um, it may already be available, depending on when you're watching it, uh, it may not. Um, but it is something I encourage you to ask me about. So feel free to email us at info at mobilitymastery.com because I don't wanna mention something like pelvic instability and then say, good luck. I'm, I don't know how you're gonna solve that on your own, um, but you know, good luck. So I hate doing that to people. I wanna give you a solution right away, uh, but it is a little bit more complex to fully solve that. However, the good news is at least you can take care of the patterns um, causing that flat foot, the compensation patterns. So go. what I would recommend is go ahead and try the recommended techniques, there are three primary ones again, tibialis anterior, perineals, and outer gastrocnemia fascia. We will create a playlist for you of those techniques, and you want to actually have a, a particular focus on that perineal fascia, um, which is between the tibialis anterior and the outer gastroc fascia. Um, it runs along the outside of your leg, straight down towards your ankle, that kind of stirrup uh, strap that I showed you, that's primarily your perineals. So you're gonna wanna spend the most time exploring that fascia. And if it happens to uh, eliminate your flat feet or flat foot and you're, you feel golden, great. Let your body actually tell you when you need to look further for something like pelvic instability. And it'll tell you that if the flat feet just keep coming back and keep coming back and no matter how much you release that perineal fascia, for example, it just keeps tightening up. That would be a clue that you need to go 
you know, further for, for the root cause answer and do a little bit more to eliminate the pain at the root instead of just taking care of the compensation pattern. Uh, but I know so many people with flat feet and when you have flat feet, it changes your gait and it changes how you're able to move and your feet are gonna become a bit weaker because they're not gonna perform the way that they're meant to while having an arch, right? So you might end up walking with your feet flexed uh, up all the time, that might actually be one of the causes, but often that's related back to pelvic instability and glutes not firing. So it's all kind of trickling back up to the hips, but uh, you can do a lot with just what I mentioned. And then the other thing that I wanna mention here is if you really wanna take this further, I would recommend uh, going barefoot more often uh, trying to grip the ground with your toes and like strengthening the bottoms of your feet and stretching that ankle a little bit while you do it. So when you grip the ground with your toes, you kind of force that ankle into a bit um, more, uh, more of a neutral position instead of being jammed like I talked about earlier. Uh, you could try picking things up with your toes to, to strengthen that. Um, I know some people have, you know, uh, mats made out of like uh, rocks that are cut in half, like a doormat that's made out of rocks and they walk on it <laughs> at home. That's like a huge thing I think I've seen in the barefoot community. Um, but those are all options for you. And then the last thing that I've seen people do that I really like, but I'm not an expert in, but I had to mention it here, uh, would be putting a wedge under your foot uh, to create an arch where there isn't any and then performing certain strengthening exercises that will force your body to go back into uh, its better activation function. So instead of cueing the compensation muscles, you're gonna force your body to start cueing uh, the right muscle. So maybe instead of that lateral line, you're gonna use more of your posterior chain uh, through certain exercises. But again, that's not my area of expertise today anyway. Uh, but you could look up other people online who might be looking at fl flat feet from a strength training perspective. Um, but I do think it's critical to take care of your fascia uh, because you, you know, just strength training isn't gonna release that really tight fascia that's causing the flat foot. Uh, so I like to take a holistic approach and take care of everything, right? Take care of the fascia that's restricted, um, strength train if needed, uh, and and then look at the root cause if you find yourself in some kind of pain or um, range of motion management where it just keeps coming back and keeps coming back. So that's what I've got for you today on flat feet. I hope this was really useful. Please share it with anyone you know who has flat feet, who feels baffled as to why their foot has become flat. And then like I mentioned, maybe take uh, uh, a look at that pelvic instability course if it's available we will link to how to actually find it for you um, uh, we'll link to that in this description but i wanted to make sure we got that in here for you because it would be really important to solve it at the root uh, if it just keeps coming back so thank you so much for watching and any comments or questions please post them below i'll see you in the comments section and i hope i'll see you next time